Hello, YouTube. Hello, Internet. Iron Sky here. I uh, wanted to take a moment to uh, share with everyone how to play penny stocks. Okay, and I've got a disclaimer here. Uh, this presentation is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation to buy or sell a security. Providing this information, of course, for entertainment purposes only, and I hope that you enjoy it. Okay, for starters, the OTC markets, also referred to as over-the-counter markets, are divided into three tiers. Uh, the top tier is the OTC QX, uh, it's, and then the middle is the OTC QB, and the bottom tier, the OTC Pink, also known as Pink Sheets. Now the Pink Sheets are divided into three separate levels, and those levels are Pink Current, uh, those, those companies do make their filings publicly available, Pink Limited, they only provide limited information, and Pink No Information they're not willing to willing or able to disclose information. They might be going through bankruptcy or something like that, or they might just be a really sketchy company. Okay, so how? Do, what's the best way to find a penny stock? Well, the, the first thing that I usually do, I'll go to a screener, such as otcmarkets.com, and I'll enter whatever criteria. If I'm looking for a pink sheet, uh, usually I'll sort by stock price. I'll do uh, triple zero one which is the lowest that any stock can be listed and I'll go up to about triple zero two and then what I'll do I'll sort by volume because I'm looking for super cheap uh, highly speculative penny stocks that have volume so they're not they're not just a dead stock that's been dead for a few years there's a stock there's a stock that seem to have some sort of interest uh, so I'll sort by volume and then I'll take my research to uh, to forums such as Investors Hub, a lot of good information there, and and then I'll also check some other things that we're going to go through in the in the video here. Uh, another way to find stock, of course, word of mouth advertising. Okay, so how do you evaluate risk? Okay, well these uh, over-the-counter stocks, penny stocks, are quite different than what you see on CNBC, Bloomberg, etc. Uh, those stocks at the ticker on the bottom of the TV. Uh, they're referred to as big board stocks, American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange. And unlike the big board stocks, the over-the-counter stocks have an extreme amount of risk associated with them. But with risk comes greater reward because it's rare to see a big board stock move a thousand or a few thousand percent in one day of trading. However, for penny stocks, that's almost an everyday occurrence. Now with a penny stock, it can go to what's referred to as no bid. So in essence, what that means, uh, typically, especially with triple zero one dot zero 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 one stocks, one would pay that to purchase a stock, which would be the ask. But if they tried to sell the stock, typically a stock that has an ask price of triple zero one is going to have zero for the bid, which means someone could purchase a stock but then they couldn't sell it so not to say that's a bad thing because sometimes a stock or you know a pink sheet company may be in a period of silence and all investors have gone elsewhere so one that purchased a stock at triple zero one that's the cheapest that you know any stock could trade at if the company released outstanding news the next week the next year for that matter and the stock ran to double zero a double zero something or even the penny range person that invested a hundred bucks and got a million shares at triple zero one could really have a nice reward waiting for them and again the OTC pink also known as pink sheets for penny stocks those are definitely the sketchiest but they also produce the uh, often produce the greatest reward now reverse splits, uh, in the big boards typically see uh, just a split, which is where someone that had one share may get, you know, 10 shares. But in, in the over-the-counter world, companies, uh, well, a lot of companies choose to reverse split. So for example, uh, one for 1,000 reverse split would give an investor one share for every 1,000 shares that they previously held. So it's... It's designed to be a positive thing, but typically speaking, when evaluating penny stocks, 
ones that have reverse split multiple times, they're probably not a wise speculative investment. And I'd recommend uh, stockcharts.com. It's a great place to conduct analysis on penny stocks that you, that you found on your own or others have shared with you. And a lot of times these companies that reverse split, immediately following the reverse split, their price per share look more attractive to people that may have not been stock uh, tracking the stock. But most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time it'll just continue to plummet back down towards triple zero one, at which point the company typically reverse splits again. So I would recommend staying away from companies that have reverse split a lot. Now dilution is a problem with a lot of penny stocks. Uh, dilution, and, and I won't go into the specifics here, but dilution just in essence means how easily a stock price can move on little volume because a company that's diluted may take billions of shares traded just to move uh, you know, a small percentage, whereas a company that's not diluted, those the, a company that's not diluted is what you want to be in on because with news there, it can move rapidly with with a little bit of volume. And typically with news comes a lot of volume. So you're talking about a company that's not diluted, receives outstanding news, and then all the investors flock to it. I mean, we've we've seen examples where a triple zero five stock in a few days has run as high as about 36 cents. So, I mean, that's that's a huge gain. And that's, you know, there's many examples like that. Back during the uh, uh, during the BP oil spill in the Gulf, there was a company called Mopin, M-O-P-N. It, it ran like that. So, I mean, you know, those aren't the only two examples. There's tons of stocks that do this, tons of penny stocks. And that's why we invest in penny stocks. So, what should one do to determine if a stock is a penny stocks diluted well any ticker symbol should be able to pull it up on your on your online broker or, or wherever for that matter and identify who the transfer agent is and the transfer agent anybody can call or email and when you do call ask for the shares outstanding authorized shares in the float of course all of this is public knowledge and I would recommend researching those three items because they're a great indicator of how easily a stock can move. And even if you're not familiar with that, just watch, uh, find, find a stock that's, you know, trading in, say, triple zero range and watch it for a few months and see, you know, when the, when a company releases news, does it move? If so, you know, how quickly does it move up? How slowly does it move down? And that, that's a great way to gauge if a stock's diluted as well. Now, if a transfer agent is gagged, a TA being gagged just means that the company has advised uh, their transfer agent to not release, to not share uh, share structure information with the public, and that's not necessarily a negative thing. But typically, for a you know a potentially sketchy penny stock, a transfer agent being gagged is is probably a reason to stay away and find another speculative play. Okay, stock forums. These are a great resource. Uh, once you've conducted your own research, join a forum. It's a great way to find some other uh, uh, some other discoveries that people have made. But never accept anything as fact. Always do your own due diligence and go in and you know and validate what claims people have made. I mean, for example, someone may say, "Oh, this this company is making a new website. Here's a link to their store," and you go to the store page. And everything looks good. There's a nice logo and you know, copyright information store coming soon. And in reality, all that is is somebody that was referred to as a pumper. And what they did, they through GoDaddy or whatever other inexpensive host, they created a uh, and well, they purchased an inexpensive hosting account, probably around seven dollars a month a year. And they published a bogus page to pump the stock. So traders that they don't look at all the details. They don't realize that the company logo is not exactly right. And then they don't realize that the copyright at the bottom of the page doesn't even match the company's name. This the stock's way the stock's price is way elevated because of that, because people didn't realize that. And then as quickly as people buy into that, then they realize that there's you know, the the page is a hoax. The stock plummets just as quickly. So in a forum 
everything you read, assume that it's that it's fiction, unless you can prove otherwise. And in a forum, there's pumpers, which we just explained, and then there's bashers. Uh, bashers usually come in. It's a good sign that the stock's doing well because they're likely the people that failed to purchase the stock when the price per share was low, and then they're trying to uh, uh, create negative news to try to uh, bring the stock price down so they can buy, buy in. So when you see bashers in a forum, it's usually a great thing. Okay, press releases. These are uh, news releases that come directly from the company. Of course, you can get these through your broker or, or uh, multiple online sources. What I would do with press releases is check to ensure that the company has historically communicated frequently with its investors in the past. A company that doesn't communicate well company that's remained in the triple zero range or whatnot, maybe not a good one to get in on. Avoid companies that have made bogus claims in past press releases. So a company that's putting out a press release, which is a fit, an official news announcement from the company, and they're loading it full of fluff, probably not a, probably not a good stock to invest in. Because if the company itself is dishonest, more than likely the investors aren't going to be wanting to flock to it. And also, look, look, read the uh, press releases for clues as to when financials and or other significant events. Those could be like a new product launch or new website, etc. Try to find dates in, within those press releases because usually things will, uh, you know, price per share will usually jump up in anticipation of that event, of that press release. So, and if, if the news during the press release is positive, Usually, the price per share will continue to go up. Okay, limit orders. When you purchase a stock, a market order, essentially what it'll do, it'll say, okay, I want to buy this many shares. Well, for, for any stock, I would, I would recommend a limit order. Uh, most brokers, they don't charge any more for it. But basically, what you could say is that, okay, I want to buy this stock at triple zero one. So you'll say, I'll buy a million shares at dot zero 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 one. And that's going to run 100 bucks plus commission. If it if they can't fill the order at triple zero one, it won't execute. So it's it's a great way to do it because if you put in if you put in a market order to buy a million shares, then say the stock price for some reason hit a penny, you've got an order out there to buy a million shares at a penny, which is a lot more than 100 bucks. Use the same thing for selling as well because these Stock, uh, penny stock prices can fluctuate very rapidly. So always use a limit order to protect yourself. Okay, now level two market depth. This is probably something that you'll want to become familiar with after you play penny stocks for a while. Essentially what it is, it's a, and I've got a separate video that you can watch where I explain market depth. But it's, it's a real-time representation of the bid and the ask side of the stock. So you've got all of these different market makers and you can see what size uh, share block they're purchasing or what size share block they're selling. There's the bid and the ask side and you can look at that for clues as to which direction the stock might be headed. And like I said, I've got a separate video. If you want to check that out, it's pretty good. Okay, establish an exit plan. First thing you should always do after purchasing a, purchasing a penny stock is determine where you'd like to sell some. And what I usually do, I'll sell, as soon as I purchase one, I'll put in a uh, limit order, you know, for whatever amount of shares to where it at least breaks even and gives me a small profit from my initial investment. But I like to keep some as well. So essentially what will happen is that it will automatically execute when the stock goes up and I've gotten all my money back and I made a small profit and then I'm riding freebies and all that riding freebies means is that you know there's there's nothing to worry about because the shares I hold of that highly speculative penny stock I, they're free because I've already made my profit and I've uh, you know I'm just riding those with the hopes of the of the stock doing something really good in the future and if it goes to no bid and if it reverse splits and goes down to pretty much no shares, it doesn't matter because I've already made my profit. It just takes emotion out of it. And expect to lose everything. 
only invest what you plan to lose, and most of the time you will lose in penny stocks. However, with that being said, most of the time with penny stocks, when you win, you win really big, unlike the big boards. So one stock that runs 1,000, 2,000 percent, that's an abundance of profit, and that greatly, greatly exceeds the small amount of losses from here and there. So use large profits as an opportunity to accumulate an abundance of speculative penny stocks. So don't, in other words, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Do your due diligence. Find a lot of, a lot of stocks you feel might have something going for them in the near future. And just put, you know, put that profit in you know, across multiple companies and let it sit. And you can also, of course, go ahead and put in limit orders. So, you know, you buy 10 different companies, one of those 10 jumps a few hundred or a few thousand percent, boom, then you can repeat the process and you can branch out into even more penny stocks. But just don't get into so many that you can't track them all because I've done that and it's uh, it's kind of, kind of confusing. So determine how many you want to track at one time and just always keep those limit sell orders up because... You never know. You might, you, you know, you might be away from your computer, and all of a sudden, boom! This huge news event comes out, and it pops. And then a few seconds later, news comes out and says that the news was bogus, and it and it plummets. So, always have that limit sell order in there to catch an opportunity if it comes up. And that's all that I have today for penny stocks. Uh, again, this is none of this is a recommendation to buy or sell a security, just for entertainment purposes. And I hope that everyone enjoyed this.